Let's now get through the cheat codes of this game, because... I've now basically decided that, well, because my original efforts of recording this were not entirely satisfactory by my standards, I just figured it would be better for me to try this again, so that's basically what I'm going to do. So, we have now completed the game. We achieved 100% by winning all of the circuit races in Los Angeles, Paris, and Tokyo, which is available from the arcade mode screen. And this game, of course, would also start the circuit racing trend, one that would ironically continue through to the uh, end of the series as well, aside from uh, the inclusion of bikes as well as cars. And... We are now going to get on with looking through the cheat codes. So, I'm going to open up a new saved profile, and I think I'm going to call this one... Basically... I'm going to call this one Cheats. Just because it'll show you how we get most of the, uh, cheat codes. Oh yeah, I forgot the, uh, the audio just resets itself. So, I'm gonna turn that off. Because, well, I figure that's, uh, appropriate. And now, let's have a look through the options menu whilst we're here, because this is where we get the cheat codes. So, the cheat codes are just over here. These, of course, are the other options we get. But this is what we're looking for. The cheat codes. So, I'm just gonna press X here. And the first cheat code I'm going to put in is called... Dextran. And basically what this means is we unlock all modes that are available to us in the game itself. And if you want to know what all modes are then well you can basically just look at both arcade mode and career mode. So yeah, there is that. So, the next one I'm going to put in will be the code NIMBUK, because this is a shorter code for me to put in rather than the collector. Now basically what this does, this unlocks all cars that we can use in arcade mode. So regardless of how much progress you've made in arcade mode, it basically just unlocks the cars and bikes automatically. But, we can also do this by putting in the collector. Which will also unlock all cars in this game. And if we put that in, you will notice now that we officially have all cars available to us. Which is what I'm basically showing off here. Because, why not? Just scrolling through each of these cars quickly. 
because I'm trying to get this over with as quickly as possible. So yeah, we can basically use any car now for the career mode. I'm also pretty sure that it unlocks all cars in arcade mode as well, if I just head over here, and you will notice, and yep, it does. So we basically get all of the career mode cars, and we also get all of the arcade mode cars. So yeah, there is all of that if you're interested. So, the next cheat code I'm going to put in will officially be the code PennyThug. And basically what PennyThug does is it gives us all of the locations. And if I just head back now and head over to Arcade Mode once again, you'll notice that all of our locations have been unlocked. So we've got Los Angeles, Paris, and Tokyo in terms of our locations. So we don't have to go through the ball-busting recklessness of the career mode to unlock all of those because, well, I've already done because, well, I've already done that once, and next one I'm going to put in, well, Nimbuck will also allow us to unlock all locations, so apparently it might be that cheat code is appropriate for two things and not just one, and I think I'm now going to head back over to the profile that I created initially because, well, I figure it's my profile that should get the cool stuff because, you know. I like taking credit for these things. So, first one I'm going to put in is entitled Green Lantern. And basically what this does is, this cheat code gives us infinite nitrous. We can also put in the save the kids code which basically gives us both guns and rockets. And yes, not only do we get guns in this game with the cars, but we also get rockets. I think with guns you basically press the left d-pad button and then for the rockets, you press the right D-pad button. So yeah, there is that. And... I think the last one I'll put in here will be... I'm going to put in... Car... Crow... Batics. Now what this does is it gives us advanced in-air controls, I think is what this does. Oh, enhanced in-air controls. I am doing internet research whilst I'm putting in these codes, by the way. So yeah. There is also another cheat code I can put in that basically gives us no damage, but... I want to show off all the other ones first because, well, I dare to be different. So, I'm going to go to, hmm, 
Yeah, let's go to Paris. And the race type I'm going to choose will be... Hmm. Which one do I want to use? Well, I could probably just do a circuit race or something. Maybe see what happens. Hmm. Actually, on second thoughts, I want to go to LA. Just because it might make things simpler that way. And I think the car I'm going to use to show off these cheat codes I just put in, I want to use the frippin' axe. Just because I've not really done anything that's... Uh, thumbnail worthy for the frippin. So yeah, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the frippin for this. Because I really don't want this to uh, take too long whilst I do it. It should also be mentioned I am uploading a video whilst recording this as well. So yeah. Oh, okay. And apparently I do damage out. Well, at least I can say somebody else damaged out with me, which uh, makes the feeling a little better. And I damaged myself out again. Oh, I think... I think I just heard a dog bark somewhere. I don't know where though. That's I can tell you where. Okay, so I'm gonna give myself some space this time. So yeah, that's basically what the uh, rocket does. Now, when you put in the no damage cheat code, that also refers to giving the AI no damage. And basically, well, in the grand scheme of things, I figure it's better for me to save that for later because, well, it means I can have fun with this. It should also be mentioned that when I did this race before using the Luso, I basically dominated that race and practically destroyed the AI from every angle you can think of. So, I'm gonna ease off for a second and use my uh, rockets again. And yep, I am basically just causing carnage. Yep, that is definitely someone's dog. Also, isn't the rapper Ice Cube from LA? I've got a feeling he is. At least I'm pretty sure he came he originated from Los Angeles. Well yeah, anyways, so you know. And I have still not been able to hit him, unfortunately. Although I did hit myself, unfortunately. Well, you know how it is. I think I have got some good thumbnail evidence anyway, so... I don't think it's uh, going to be too hard for me to... Uh, Okay, I don't think I'm beating him anymore. I think I may... I think I probably wrecked myself one too many times. Though in saying that, my car has a lot more superior speed, so... And never mind. Oh well. 
Oh well. I finished last, but at least I've finished last in style. Eh, whatever. I don't care. I've already finished the game, so it's not like I'm really expecting myself to, uh... Oh, okay. So basically, if I press... So basically... If I press... So basically... If I press circle, what happens is... I literally pause the replay. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I think I probably wrecked one too many times in that race. No, I can probably go back and redeem myself later. If I really wanted to, but... Then again, I do wonder if this race might be too short for me to, uh... Do that. So, you know. That could be part of the plan, but we'll wait and see. I'll have to think about this as I go along. Probably isn't ideal for me to do the same race again, but... No, I'll probably do the first race in Paris for the, uh, Next one. Knowing me. But yeah. So, you know. Okay, well, I've got a full lap in. Probably didn't need to coast there, but... I was basically just trying to make sure that I did get some decent shots. Okay, I think that'll do it now. I think I've cocked about with the replay long enough. So, there are two cheat codes we can put in for this. We can put in the immortal cheat code. Now, Basically what this does is it gives us guns, rockets, nitrous, and we're basically invincible. We can also put in the no damage cheat code by typing in the cheat code gladiator, which will basically just give us the no damage feature anyway. But, if you want to put in the Immortal Cheat Code, then, you know, it's basically there for you, because, well, you basically get the guns, the rockets, the unlimited, I think the unlimited nitrous and no damage. I'm also pretty sure there is a cheat code for the, uh, Unlimited Nitrous. Oh yeah. I probably could have used the Infinite Nitrous thing if I really wanted to, but no, I chose not to. Oh well, I can always come back and redeem myself later. But anyways, I'm gonna continue with the Frippin' for now because, well... Airtime with these cars is important. And that's what I'm trying to give them. So, yeah. That's what I'm doing here. Hey! I did not think that was going to cause all of them to go straight up into the air, but... I must have obviously done something right. Pretty sure I didn't activate the rockets. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So basically, if you are invisible, or if you do not sustain any body damage with these cheat codes, then the AI does not sustain any body damage either, basically. I also believe that whilst this car is based off of a VW Golf R32, Oh, I caused one of the brimstones to go up into the air again. Oh, okay. Yep, he's getting aggressive. Oh, good thing this is a four lap race and not a three lap race. Although I'm not doing very well at the moment. And it kind of sucks to say how the clock is ticking at the moment. But anyway. It's okay, because... I know the pack doesn't get very far. And I've still got two laps to catch back up to the leaders. Even with my nitrous recharged, I still have a shot at catching up to them, so all hope is not lost. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, at least I'm keeping myself in position for the win. And I overshoot the corner. How unsurprising. And I just shot one of the rockets into the building. That wasn't my intended plan, but it's one it's one of those plans I can go along. Technically. And I rolled the car over again. Well, there goes any shot I have of winning. There's nothing I can do about that now. Unless I can somehow catch back up to the leader. And nope, doesn't look like it. Oh well, it doesn't matter. But yeah, point is, even though you do get no damage, it doesn't prevent you from rolling the car, which basically, after noticing what was just happening there, well, I decided it just simply wasn't worth the risk. So, yeah. Okay, so there's one more cheat code for me to show off whilst I'm here. And that is basically the how hard can it be cheat code. And basically what this does is it adjusts the difficulty of any race you enter in the career mode. But I also believe this can be unlockable from the main menu. But of course, if you put in anywhere from 0 to 9 with the words how hard can it be all in one space then you can pretty much adjust the difficulty of any career mode race you enter but am I gonna give this a try? Probably not. And I think there's going to be one more thing I'm going to do whilst I'm here. Just because I figure this is one thing I've been uh, wanting to do since the start of the game. And that is to show off the new car we get. If I just head all the way over here, 
and straight here, the SLF 450X. And sure, we can go to Shin. We can go to Shinjuku Speedway. Why not? I don't think this is going to take me too long to get through. So yeah, I'm going to do a showcase with the car that we win for scoring 100%. And then, once we're done here, well... I'm basically just going to get on with my final thoughts on the game. So yeah, basically this car is only only has two gears and it also has a top speed without nitrous of 249 miles per hour. It's the fastest speed a single car can do in this game without the usage of nitrous. And I've already crashed. Well, at least I can say the no damage cheaters on this thing. And at least I know it'll be a lot easier for me to catch up to the leader compared to if I was using one of my original cars. There is also slipstreams as well. It would be nice if I could stay ahead of the AI, please. Or at least stay ahead of them long enough just to uh, showcase. How much quicker this car really is. And even though I'm showing just how quick this car is, the one thing I'm not showing is, however, the domination because, well, my ineptitude is showing my recklessness. But either way, it doesn't matter because I've done all these races before, I probably don't need to win them all again. And I am glad to say I don't need to win them all again. I should also mention we do actually get maximum nitrous charges as well. But yeah, basically we can get infinite nitrous when we use up all of our shots of nitrous. Basically, the nitrous itself practically stays loaded for as long as the code itself is on, if you could call it that. I do also think this car looks really similar to the Batmobile. I don't know why that's the case, but I think it looks really similar to the Batmobile. If you're asking from me personally about what I would say this car looks like. Although that could just be me, because, well, I am technically regarded as a DC fan and I do very much like the DC universe oh god okay can I please stop hitting the telephone poles that would be nice okay so yeah we get unlimited charges of nitrous. And there we go, I cross the line at top speed. So that basically just shows you how fast the SLF 450X is. And I won in the end by 8 seconds over Montaro and Tomeo. Okay, anyways. <sighs> We're done. Pretty much showed off all of the cheat codes I need to show off. And now... I think I'm gonna give the 
frippin' some redemption from uh, earlier on, just because I want to prove that it is capable of winning. So that's how I'm gonna do my. Uh, that's how I'm gonna do my final thoughts on the game. Do part of it whilst racing in LA, and then do the other part whilst I'm uh, on the. Uh, and do the other part of it whilst I'm. Uh, on the progress screen. Oh, and someone has a cat as well. Well, I guess you gotta have some sound effects to show it's a city. But yeah. So. Thus now completes Midnight Club 2. And I gotta say, this game overall, it is a significant improvement on the predecessor. It's definitely what I consider to be a worthy successor for the franchise as a whole. And there's no question in saying that this game is clearly better than the first one. I mean, the physics and handling characteristics, they are just a lot better in this game compared to the first one. And even though critics did give this game a ton of backlash because of its derogatory stereotypes, and in some cases those stereotypes were also regarded as racist, at the time. But then again, this was far from the only game at the time to have the racial stereotyping because, well, there were quite a few street racing games at the time that did go hard on the stereotypes and were no doubt criticised heavily for. But again, I guess it was just one of those reoccurring themes of the time, so you know. But either way, I don't think it really backtracks from just... from just how good the game really is, because in spite of all the problems it has ethically, I still believe that overall, this is a pretty good game. Now, in terms of the career mode, well, I would say LA and Paris in the career mode, they're both moderately challenging at best. But then, by the time you get into Tokyo, basically all freaking hell breaks loose. And the whole thing basically looks even more mental than a prison break in Arkham Asylum, more or less. But with arcade mode, however, it's not quite as hard to work your way through, but... I'd still say it's enough of a challenge, and if you really do feel committed enough to play your way through this game, and you feel committed enough to uh, accept the challenges that this game throws at you, then, you know, go for it. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't recommend this game to kids, because this game is clearly not child-friendly in any sense of the word, and I also really like how with this game there would be the inclusion of motorcycles as well as cars for the vehicles that you can use in this game, and that's ironically another trend that would continue onwards to basically the end of the series. 
And the same can also be said with the circuit racing. Now, the circuit racers, they're not quite as hard to work your way through as what the career mode racers are, although they're technically point-to-point racers, ordered as well as unordered races that you have to work your way through. But there's definitely going to be plenty of curveballs along the way, and it is fair to say that you will be in for a very bumpy ride once you get into Tokyo regarding the career mode, because, well, Tokyo is when the career mode just becomes mental. But I do advise you take breaks from this game if you're basically getting stressed out. And this game technically did do that to me a couple of times, but I did take the breaks whenever they were necessary, and, well, my thoughts overall on the game remained fairly positive. So... In spite of all the problems this game has ethically towards certain crowds and not just because of the stereotypes but because of a couple of other things that I can't really be bothered to mention, I still think altogether this is a pretty good game. It's definitely a better game than the first one and if you do want to start off with this game rather than the original Midnight Club, then I honestly don't blame you. But there's no question in saying that this game... it's pretty good altogether. And... whether I recommend this game or not, well... it's purely on your perspective. So... yeah. You can play it if you want, but... There will be plenty of oddball occurrences that will occur throughout the career mode. And some races in this game are harder than others. Because if you think that this game is something you can easily beat, then you'd better think again. Because this game will put you back in your place if you think you're above it. Trust me, you are not. So yeah, good game, good cars. I'd say it's enjoyable to an extent until certain challenges in this game really start to piss you off. But overall, it's a good game. And regarding recommendations, well, it depends on what you think. So yeah. And all I can say now is a big thank you to everyone for watching. I always appreciate the support that my channel gets viewership-wise, whether it either does or doesn't deserve it. It's entirely up to you. And I'm now going to go and finish Hot Pursuit 2, where I will then be working on my first official playthrough of 2024, which will be coming once I have completed Hot Pursuit 2. So yeah. And I will see you all for the end of Hot Pursuit 2. So until then, I'm Jordan Mustang 87 again saying thanks for watching, and until the next one. Peace out.